New Radio and Door County Daily News, Paul Schmidt here at Crossroads at Bay Creek and uh, they're doing an archaeological dig which they do a couple times a year and joining us right now is uh, Professor Amaretis from Milwaukee, you know it'll be Milwaukee, Bob Jeske and also Emily Rux who is also from Sturgeon Bay here and involved as archaeologist on staff here at the Crossroads, correct? Yes, archaeologists and residents. In residence. So just talk a little about what you guys are doing today. I know you guys have been doing this here for the last few days, but you're kind of wrapping up things here. But talk about where we start with with the archaeological dig and what we found so far. Bob? Or why don't you go ahead, Emily? Um, the uh, archaeological site was found a number of years ago when Crossroads took ownership of the property and surface finds were identified. Um, we had stone flakes similar to what we see here, some native ceramics right here and some butchered animal bones. And those were all found just laying exposed on the surface, um, both from just natural weather erosion and also from um, pulling out invasive species of plants. They were identified and so they began with um, doing a series of shovel test pits. So those are dug on a grid and they help us locate the presence or absence of a site and estimated parameters of it. So from there, they were able to um, identify some areas of better archaeological concentration, artifact concentrations, um, back over by the signs over there, through some of this um, field here, and then in this area we've been excavating going south to north. And as far as picking the spots that you guys do, because you do this a couple times a year, how is that determined as far as which the next area will be going? We've been digging at this one for at least three years now. Okay. Um, we dig um, in a metered grid, so we usually start with like a one by one or a one by two meter test hole. Um, and then depending on what we find is what determines which direction we go. So where there's a greater archeological con um, artifact concentration, if there's a feature like this pit feature that Bob just um, pulled the screen up off of over here. Okay. Um, when we start to see those things in the soil, that's how we identify where we should be testing next. Interesting. So if you look at these, these show up at the base of the plow zone. We remove this darker soils that you can see here. This was all plowed. So that's, we remove that till we get down to this lower whiter material mm -hmm. that we call the B horizon. And then if you dig a hole through that top into the bottom, into the subsoil, and then it gets filled in with organic materials, that stain will often remain for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, in fact. So when we remove this top dark soil and look at the lighter soil, what we saw here was a circle. And what we did then was we cut this trench so that we could then look at the, the uh, stain in profile. Mm -hmm. And what we saw here was a basin. So that we then basin this out. This material here went through the screen like you just saw us working on before. This material on this side was put into uh, a bag and will be taken back to the lab and put through a fi very fine screen uh, water removal uh, uh, device so we can get at really tiny things like uh, seeds and fish scales and, and things that would normally be missed. Mm -hmm. So what you see here then are the remains of how we go about excavating these things. And so we, we have, you know, in these two pit features right here, and we think we have another one because of the density of artifacts we're recovering above it right now mm -hmm. in this unit. That suggests a, a pretty um, dense occupation. Uh, perhaps more than just seasonal um, and that goes along with a number of years ago they found what has been interpreted as a, a house structure um, and so we think this was an area you know, right along the cove here on this little land formation probably a multi-seasonal camp I yeah. would say you know not year-round necessarily but more than just a few weeks at a time because these were probably some kind of food processing pits that then got filled in with site garbage and so on over the years. Any idea, time frame as far as when this probably was settled here? The ceramics uh, and the stone tools, the styles, tell us it was probably about a thousand years, give or take a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do now, some of the materials we're getting hopefully from these, we, we call these features, these pits, will be organic and we'll be able to do uh, a radiocarbon dating on them and that will give us a, a more precise date. Very so good. we're working on that right now. 
And how long have you guys been out here today? Just uh, doing the uh, digging and sifting? Um, we've been here since about nine this morning. Nine this morning. And yep. you found all that? That's that the list just, on there? Yeah, that just came from a small section from this of area this two here. by two meter yeah, test unit here. Fascinating. Can we go over that a little bit, a little bit more in detail as far as what you guys found today then? Sure. Let's yeah. go up there and take a look. And uh, again, and sifting, it's just kind of, you'd use the box to just sift through all the dirt and everything just to find any, any uh, objects and things, correct? Yes, this is a six millimeter mesh or two, you know, about a quarter inch mesh screen. And that's fairly standard for archeological recovery rates. And um, what you see here are probably over a hundred flakes. And this is the end of a broken biface. Uh, a biface is a tool that is made on two sides. It's when most people think of arrow points or spear points, mm -hmm. generally speaking, they're, they're bifaces. And this is the end of one that broke probably during manufacture. There's a, actually a flaw in the material, and it looks like it, they broke it off. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these two, a lot of these flakes here, are uh, repair flakes. That is, they're they're um, they're flakes that are done when you're trying to resharpen a flake and so on. Mm -hmm. And that is again indicative of longer term. People are staying in one place and they're re, um, reworking their tools, getting ready for next season or whatever. This is a ceramic type that we're getting out of here. Uh, this is what we call late woodland. It's not associated with any kind of tribe per se, um, a historic tribe. But if you can see that on the side, this would be the outside, that's the inside. Mm -hmm. This is a collared ceramic. It has a little shelf on it. And it is marked by cords. Here's another one. Oh, yeah. uh, you can see there are cord marks in here. These are um, indicative of that style of about a thousand years ago or so. Wow. And that's so, all like pottery pieces, kind of pots or pans or whatever they... Yes, they were. these are mostly um, kind of bag-shaped pots kind of things. Um, they didn't have a wide variety. Like they didn't, uh, during this time period, you don't see a lot of uh, plates or pans or anything. Mostly they're using what we call jars. Okay. And they're using them to store food and they're using them to cook. And then we're looking over here. And this, is, deer. this is mostly deer and there's a fish vertebra right there. Wow. Yeah, that right there, that's a that's the vertebra of a fish. The rest of this is deer bone. Interesting. What's the most interesting artifact you guys have found here while doing digging here in the last few years? Um, in May, we found a bone harpoon point. Wow. That was kind of cool for me. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, and that was pretty awesome. Um, just some really beautiful ceramics. We've seen um, similar to the style we have here, and then we've seen... Uh, quite a few pieces that have like a cross hatching mm -hmm. so they look almost like a diamond shape pattern that's gone around and that has been pretty uh, beautiful pieces and larger pieces too so we can get more information from them when we can see a larger area of it very cool and they, they look a lot different once they get cleaned up a little bit these are these are complete very dirty Right. Just right out, of the, right out of the dirt. Well, thank you very much for sharing the information. And uh, and again, uh, best of luck with the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Paul Schmidt reporting for Door County Daily News and New Radio.